dream comes true. You could swim along the river, all the way to the sea. You could fly up in the sky, above the clouds and trees. You could plant a flower garden up on top of the moon. You could swing through the jungle all afternoon. Wherever our story takes us, I can't wait to see. Yes, friends, come and read with me. It's online story time. and welcome to Online Storytime at your Grand Rapids Area Library. I'm Miss Tracy. I'm Teacher Missy. And we are delighted that you are here with us. We are twinkling happy that you are here with us. And that, my friends, is a clue. So Teacher Missy, before we start talking about twinkling, do you want to sing? I think we should. All right, Storytime friends, would you sing with us? Here we go. If you want to hear a story, clap your hands. If you want to hear a story, clap your hands. If you want to hear a story, if you want to hear a story, if you want to hear a story, clap your hands. And I can't wait to hear a story. So, what are we going to twinkle about today? Well, I think this is just such a fun thing to talk about because it's something we can all see sometimes mm -hmm. in the sky. Mm. Nope, nope, not a cloud. A bird? Nope, not a bird. Uh, think about mosquito. a mosquito. We can see lots of those. Okay. How about in the dark? When it's dark oh. out and there aren't any clouds, oh. what do we see in the night sky? A bat. A bat. Higher up? Higher up, way, way, way up high. An airplane! Oh, Miss Tracy. <sighs> she just doesn't get it. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at our picture. What do you think this is a picture of? Teacher Missy, those are stars. They are stars. Are we talking about stars We're today? talking about stars, Miss well, Tracy. Why didn't you say so? They are way up high. And on cloudy nights, can we see the stars? No, nope, we can't. No, nope. they don't shine through the clouds. So that means they're gone then, right? No, it means that they're hiding. Oh, the clouds, so even if we can't see them, they're, they're still, still there? still there. What about in the daytime? Where do stars go in the daytime? They're still there, but the sun, when the sun is up, we can't see the stars. The stars are there all the time? All the time. That is wonderful I know, isn't that, isn't that just so cool? That is great. Hey, do you have any good books about stars? Eh, I'll look around, I might. <laughs> hey, Miss Tracy, look at this. Are they in the back of a truck? They are in the back of a truck, and what do you suppose they're looking at? I think they might be looking at the stars. They're uh, looking up to the stars. They are looking up, and it looks dark out to me. Mm -hmm. And if you look over the top of the truck, and I'll try to hold this so you guys can see this, there are stars. It must be nighttime. And it's called A Bed of Stars, written and illustrated by Jessica Love. Hmm. A Isn't bed that a of great last name? I know. That's a, it is a great last name. Love. My thumb is not working. This book comes to us from Candlewick Press. I'm going to struggle with this a little bit, guys, so be patient with me. It used to be when it was time for bed, I would imagine the whole universe stretching on endlessly, forever. The bigger it got, the smaller I felt. I was too worried to fall asleep. That was an interesting feeling. So they were kind of scared at how big the universe was. Mm -hmm. huh. A little overwhelming. It makes you feel kind of small and tiny. One morning at breakfast, my dad said, we're going camping, you, you and me. Where, I asked. The desert, said dad. Why, I asked. And dad said, to shake hands with the universe. Wow. That's an interesting idea. 
We have an old truck named Darlin, and we pack her up with everything we'll need. The most important thing about packing is to put the big stuff in first, and then you can squeeze the small stuff in around it. We drive out of the city, which smells like rubber, french fries, and we listen to Dolly Parton sing. <laughs> As we climb up into the mountains, the smell changes to sweet and smoky. This is the best smell, I say. Yeah, mine too, Dad said. We drive over the mountain covered in charred black trees and lots of flowers. Dad tells me all their names and what they are useful for. Mountain flowers, the manza, this is a hard word to say, manzatia was, its wood is excellent for carving into spears. Well, that's interesting to know. White sage and those, oh, that smells good. We use sage in our cooking. Did you know that sometimes? Yeah, I do. And sticky monkey flower? Hmm, doesn't look like a monkey. <laughs> We stop at our favorite junkyard to see if there are any new parts for Darlin. And so dad can shoot the breeze with Jody. Shooting the breeze is when adults have a boring conversation. <laughs> I climb the tire mountain and draw a picture of Jody's dog who doesn't do anything except sleep. When it's time to go, we drive away listening to the blues. This song is lonesome, I say to dad. In a, in a nice way, Dad smiles and squeezes me closer. Finally, Dad brings Darlin to a stop and says, we're here, we're where? We're, <laughs> uh, we're all alone. Not quite, says Dad. The ground is covered in tiny tracks. Dad says they're the footprints of all the beetles who come out in the morning and drink the dew. <laughs> so I guess they're not alone. I guess not. They're in company of beetles. The first thing to do, Dad said, is jump in the sand dunes. Look at them go. You kind of like jumping in the snow, I bet. Only warm. Whoops. Whacking myself in the face. Oh, that's good. We lie back in the sand and we name all the birds that we can see. Dad says if he could be any bird, he'd be a crow because they're so smart and they can use tools. If I were a bird, I'd be a swallow because they can fly the hardest patterns. And here are many birds that they saw, a turkey vulture and a hawk and a crow. And here's a little cliff swallow. Oh. Just a little guy. The next thing to do is to set up camp. And what are they going to do, do you suppose? Hmm. Right, they're going to build a fire. Well, first they have to gather fuel, arrange some rocks, put the sticks up, light your sticks, then blow on them sit around the fire and sing all the songs you know that's fun to sit around a campfire and it sing is sing with people yeah that is very very much fun when the sun starts to set we lie on darlin and we watch the colors change look where they're they're laying up on the hood of that old truck there's somebody up on top of this hill. I wonder who that is. Maybe coyotes. There are three of them and they kind of look like they're barking up at the moon. When the sun starts to set, we lie on Darlin and we watch the colors change. If there is a sunset, I say, you have to stop and watch. We each pick a spot in the sunset to live. <laughs> they are right next to each other. 
That's, what a cool idea. Then it's time to get to sleep. This is the part I'm scared of. How big the universe is and how it goes on forever and ever. After a minute, Dad said, do you know what the stars are made of? What, what, I say, energy. Same as you, same as the beetles and the crows and the coyotes, we're all friends and family. Maybe if you learned their names, they wouldn't feel so much like strangers. So we snuggle up all cozy and we name all the stars we can see. We name some of them after folks we met today, Jody's dog star, the coyote cluster, and the beach, the beetle, I'm sorry, the beetle nebula. I name one after me too. It's not that I feel bigger than the universe or the universe feels smaller. It's more like I know we are made of the same stuff, only in different bodies. I fall asleep. When I wake up the next morning, the sun is just tipping over the top of the mountains. The first thing I to do, I say to dad, is to drink hot chocolate in bed. So we do. And look at where their bed is. They're sleeping in the back of that truck. And the sun climbs higher in the sky. We see that the desert has bloomed. We say, hello, Octello, Glomalo, Agave. Those are all desert plants. It's a long drive home, so we pack everything up, pour water on the fire pit to make sure that it's out, and check twice that we haven't left anything behind. Just, just footprints, Dad said. Like the beetles, I said. As we drive back up through the mountains, Dad asks me to name all the new friends that I've met. And I do. Beetles? Mm, cacti? Uh, coyotes? Mm, stars? Look at showing the little coyotes jumping around. They're kind of... They look like a dog, don't they? They're in the same family as a dog. Same animal family. And when we get back home, Mama's there with the baby, and I'm happy to see them. Oh, I have so many things to tell you, I said to the baby. We've got something for you too, Mom said. Covering my walls and ceiling are a million stars. Mom spent all day putting them up when we were gone. Aww. Whoa, I said. It's like the whole universe lives in my little bedroom. Even the cat's looking up. <laughs> that night, oh, this is just an awkward book. That night, alone in the dark, I name all the stars. Mouse star, pine tree constellation, sand dune galaxy, Darlin nebula. I, I fall asleep inside my house with my mom and dad and the baby nearby and above me and below me and all around me are my friends and family. And they're all around him, all around him. That was a great trip. And I am at home in universe. Isn't that cool that he felt better after going out and seeing the stars? Yep. Closer? Yep. And, and he got a little understanding of, of what they are and how far away they are. You know, Miss Tracy, did you know that when we look up and we look at the stars, some of the stars we see, this is a hard thing to get your head around, but some of the stars we see are no longer there. Wow. They are so far away that by the time the light reaches us, 
they have already burnt out. Isn't that just amazing? That's that's cool. And and that's just part of the universe. Stars burn out all the time. All and the time. More stars are born all the time. Right. Too, so so the, you, you would never notice that. Uh -uh. You would just see them and that's some amazing. are still there and some are not. Hey, story time, friends. Teacher Missy. Yes. Do you want to do a flannel board? Oh, flannel time. And guess what? I have five iguana. They're not iguanas. No, 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 no. Because um, we're talking about five armad. Nope, they're not armadillos. No, they're not armadillos. Oh, palm trees? Five palm. No. Mm -mm. no that's not You're right. Oh, story time, friends. You're always right. We have five stars. Stars. On the board. And we are going to talk about what happens to the stars when the sun comes out. Okay? And so our song is called Five Bright and Shining Stars. Are you ready? Here we go. Uh, do you have your... your I do. Good. Teacher, me, Teacher Missy has her music. So I've got my words. Don't panic. We're all fine. We're, we're on it. Here we go. Five bright and shining stars, twinkling from very far, glowing as brightly as they can. One disappears from sight as the sun brings morning light. Now there are four bright shining stars today. One, two, three, four. But teacher Missy, what happened to the other star? I think it's getting so light out that we can't see it, maybe. Oh, that means it's gone then. No, it, it, it's there, we just can't see it. You're right. Look, story time, friends. The star is still there, but the light makes it so we can't see it. Right, it covers it. That's crazy. Well, now we have to sing about four bright and shining stars, twinkling from very far, glowing as brightly as they can. One disappears from sight. As the sun brings morning light, now there are three bright shining stars today. Did you miss me? What happened to that star? Uh oh, we've lost another one. Hmm. It's gone, right? I no, no, it's not gone. It it it's hiding. What? It's In still the, there. It's still there, but the sunlight the makes su it so we oh. can't see it. So we can only see these three now. Right, because it's getting lighter. Okay. I think. All right. So now we have three bright and shining stars twinkling from very far, glowing as brightly as they can. One disappears from sight as the sun brings morning light. Now we are two bright shining stars today. One, two. We only have two left and the sun's going. It's getting higher and higher in the sky. So let's sing about. Two bright and shining stars twinkling from very far, glowing as brightly as they can. One disappears from sight as the sun brings morning light. Now there is one bright shining star today. Oh, wow. Look at that sun. One by one, they're just, they, going, they are just, they are just sun. going away. So let's sing about one bright and shining star twinkling from very far glowing as brightly as it can one disappears from sight 
as the sun brings morning light. Now there are no bright shining stars today. Five bright and shining stars still up there very far, hidden by the light of the sun. We will wait all day until the sun goes away. Then we can see our five bright stars tonight. Yay! And there it is. But are they still there? You betcha. There they are, underneath the light of the sun. Hey, thanks for playing. Miss Tracy. Yes, teacher. Look Missy. at this. Isn't that a pretty cover? Well, it is. It looks like that small person is dancing in the stars. Well, that's what it looks like to me, too. And isn't that funny? Because the book is called The Stack, hmm. written and illustrated by Vanessa Roeder. I, and this comes to us from Dial Books. Um, the Stack. Hmm. I wonder what that could mean. The Stack. The stack. Well, it started with a single chair. Oh, there's a chair right there. On it, Luna reached up high, but couldn't quite get there. Even with a little stepping stool, it was a tad too low. Hmm. I wonder what she's trying to reach. Trying to reach something. She ran away and returned with 22 books in tow. Luna stacked them one by one with vigilance and care. Vigilance, what does that mean? Um, that she does it without stopping. Right, determined. Yes. Yes. And when she climbed atop the stack, she started to despair. Her quest seemed insurmountable. She had to think much bigger. She planted or planned a complicated scheme to execute with vigor. Vigor means energy. Go for it. Enthusiasm. Atop the books, she placed her bed set upright on its end. <laughs> That's a little goofy. And next she tossed a cloth foot tub that held her tallest friend. <laughs> Somebody's in the tub. Oh my goodness sakes. Luna piled on stacks of plates, her mother's finest set. There she is, stacks of plates. Then she launched her neighbor's house. Oh my gosh. Did you, did you hear something? Said the neighbor from inside the house. Luna is very determined. She's very determined. Uh, he, the other one says, I, I think the squirrels are back. <laughs> but she couldn't reach just yet. Boys and girls, what do you think she's trying to reach? must be way up there. An elephant, a humpback whale, her grandpa's station wagon. I, I don't trust this newfangled GPS system, grandpa says. <laughs> Turn left at the elephant. <laughs> she flung a princess in a tower. I don't think that it's squirrels, said the man in the house. She even, even chucked the dragon. Oh my gosh, look at this, Miss Tracy. That's a big dragon. That's a strong girl. That's a very strong girl. Oh, I think I'm airsick. <laughs> <laughs> 
Finally, atop the beast, she heaved a pirate ship. Wow. On top of all that stuff? She climbed and clambered. Up she went with all her strength and might. <laughs> the lady in the house is offering her a, a cucumber. <laughs> she called the great colossal stack. Up to its highest height, she scaled, not called. She scaled. Do you know what that means, Miss Tracy? Scaled? It's to climb. To climb. You're not a prince. Arg! A scallywag. That's coming from the pirate ship. Carefully, she perched on top and opened up the jar. Can I borrow a towel? Said the girl in the bathtub. <laughs> She's way at the bottom of the stack now, isn't she? Luna stood on tippy toes to reach a single star. She placed the twinkling star inside and screwed the lid on tight. With the prize clutched in her arms, she made her downward flight. Look at her, she's going in a parachute. Mm. Probably easier than climbing back down. Back inside her room that night, the gleaming starlit spread. She glanced around the room and wished. She hadn't tossed her bed. <laughs> she threw her bed up there, remember? Now what is she going to do? do? But Luna didn't mind so much. She had her light instead. And there's her light. And what, did, what was in the jar? Do you remember? What did she go get? That's right. She went to get a star. A star. And she said, sweet dreams. That was a lot of work to catch a star, wasn't it? Pretty amazing. I don't know, throwing that dragon? <laughs> <laughs>
My scarf goes up, my scarf comes down, my scarf goes around, 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 around. My scarf goes in, my scarf comes out, my scarf flies about, 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 about. Woo! Wow. Oh, oh, that was fast. All right, now we're going to slow it down a little bit. And guess what? We are going to do a scarf song about stars. No, not armadillos, but stars. All right, here we go. And this is called Stars Are Twinkling. And so our stars are going to be twinkling in the sky. So you just put your stars up in the sky. Here we go. Stars are twinkling in the sky, in the sky, in the sky. Stars are twinkling in the sky, way up high. We can see them twinkling bright. Twinkling bright, twinkling bright, we can see them twinkling bright all through the night. And there we go. Hey, thanks for playing. Story time, friends. Teacher Missy, I had such a fun day today. This was really fun. What a great thing to think about. Think about the billions of stars in the sky and our young friend here was kind of nervous about how many stars and how big the universe was until he went on a camping trip with his dad. Right. And they could sit there and just admire the stars and be a part of the stars, and that was pretty cool. That was really cool. And um, Luna, Luna over here, she finally got her prize after throwing the chair and the bathtub and the house and the dragon and everything else up. She got her star. And if you remember, where do the stars go during the day when the sun comes out? They don't go anywhere. They're still there. We just can't see them. I know, that's, that's an interesting thing to think yeah, about. Yeah, that really is. But now I think it's time to say goodbye. It is. Storytime friends, would you sing with us? Okay, here we go. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Yes, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Story time is done today. Now it's time to go and play. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye, guys. Look for a star. <laughs>